Um, hello, everyone. So you are welcome to um, to this lecture. Um, in this lecture, we want to talk about uh, integral domains. We've looked at subrings and fields um, fields in the previous video. So now we want to look at integral um, discuss integral domains. Okay, and then we'll look at the relationship between integral domains and fields. All right. So um, an integral domain actually is um, say D is a commutative ring. Okay, uh, with a non zero unity, and that contains no zero devices or no devices of zero. Okay, so that is called an integral domain. So, this is probably more intuitive. Uh, if you have a commutative ring, then it is called an integral domain if you have two elements, right, such that if A and B is equal to zero, A times B is zero, then either A is zero or B is zero. Okay. Remember that we said a division ring, not a division ring, um, is zero devices are elements that are not zero, but when you multiply them, right, you get a zero. Okay, in an integral domain, you don't need zero devices. Okay, if I multiply two elements and I get zero, okay, then I know that one of them or both, right, must be zero, either this or that must be zero. Okay, and this is this is what our familiar, this is what we're familiar with in solving problems, right? Um, and so we are we are actually solving problems in this domain, in the in the integral domain for the most part. Okay, so that is an integral uh, integral domain, and it's important because if you know that, um, for instance, if you know the coefficients of let's say some polynomial, right, um, come from an integral domain. Then um, if you have, if you end up with, let's say X, okay, X minus one times X plus two is equal to zero. Well, you know that the coefficients of the polynomial are from an integral domain. Therefore, if I multiply this and that is equal to zero, either this is equal to zero and that is equal to zero, then I can solve for uh, my X's, okay? If I don't know that uh, that is coming from, from an integral domain, well, then it could be possible that neither this one nor this one is zero, and yet the product is giving you a zero, right? Uh, that means that this and this will be zero devices. But in an integral domain, you don't have zero devices, okay? So if this time that is zero, then either this is equal to zero or that is equal to zero. So that is why it's important. So that is, um, that is, that is an integral, uh, integral domain. Okay, so here's uh, an example too. Now Z, right? The set of integers and a set of integers modulo P where P is prime, all right? Are integral domains, okay? If P here or N, if you like, is not prime, then the set of integers modulo N is not an integral domain. It is only an integral domain if N here is prime, all right? So keep, keep this in mind too. Now, for instance, um, under Z4, Z4 is the integers modulo four, you have the elements zero, two, four, and zero, and three. We see that two times two here will give us zero, right? Under modulo four, okay? So even though two is not zero, uh, when you multiply them, you get a zero. So two here is a zero divisor, okay? That means that Z4 here is not uh, an integral domain here. So there should be domain here. Domain is not an integral domain, okay? Domain, domain goes here, all right? So that is, uh, so Z4 is not an integral domain because you have a zero divisor. Two here is a zero divisor uh, in it, okay? But if you take, for instance, Z5 or Z3, you will notice that you don't have zero devices. So it forms an integral domain. You can, you can try that, right? Write down the elements and you'll find that you cannot find two elements when you multiply them, uh, two non-zero elements where the product is giving you zero. Okay. Okay, good. Um, here's another example. Before that, we want to look at this. I want to remind you of a direct product. We discussed this already. So um, the direct product of two sets, let's say S1 and S2 is given by this, right? It's given by, it's usually given in these pairs. So S1 times or cross S2 is given by the pair X and Y, where X is from S1 and Y is from the set S2, right? 
So that is, uh, that is a direct product. So elements, of course, in the direct product are these, um, these pairs of numbers, okay? So you can let, for instance, um, x1, y1, x2, y2 be elements of this direct product. Then the multiplication is often done component-wise. So I take the first components, multiply them, the second component, multiply them, and I get that. Addition is similar, right? You, you add them component-wise. Okay, so if you have your direct product defined in this way, uh, we will show, right, this example actually shows that the direct product is not an integral domain because you can have zero devices, okay? So let's take an example of that. So consider two sets R and S forming a direct product. Um, let R be in S, R be in R, and small s in S, uh, both of which are non-zero, okay? Small r, small s, and non-zero. Then if I take this element in, in R, right? R0, R0 actually in the, in the direct product, I take another element 0s also in the direct product. If I multiply them, well, if you do that component wise, you have R times zero, that will give me zero, and zero times s will give me zero. So even though this R0 is not zero, right? And zero s is not zero, the product gives me zeros, which means that these, these two elements are zero devices or devices of zero, which means that the direct product is not an integral domain, okay? So the direct product is not an integral domain. If you have a set of uh, Z modulo N where N is not prime, you don't have a, an integral domain. But Z and ZP, where P is prime, they give you, those are examples of integral domains, okay? Okay, so you are probably wondering what is the, 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 the uh, connection, right? What is the connection between a field and an integral domain, okay? Well, this th theorem actually uh, shows that every field, every field is actually an integral domain. In other words, if you are within a field, you don't have zero devices, right? If I multiply any two numbers and I get zero, those, either one of them must be zero. So every field is an integral domain. So let's prove that. And that will, um, that will basically bring us to end in this, okay? So let F be uh, a field and let, um, 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 well, if it's a field, then F is commutative ring, right? Okay, remember that a field is a commutative um, division ring, okay? So F is commutative ring with unity, all right? And every non-zero element of R has a multiplicative inverse. All right, we know that because F is a field. Now let A, B, and A and B be elements of the field. And let's suppose that A is not zero. So basically we want to show that, to show that uh, every field is an integral domain, we want to show that if I take two elements in the field and multiply them, okay? If I take two elements that are non-zero, two elements and multiply them, I want to show that either one of them must be zero. That is the point. If I can show that, then I've shown that um, the field there is an integral domain. Okay, so we are going to take two elements A and B. We're going to suppose that A, right, A there is not zero, okay, and multiply them. Then if A and B is zero, then what do we have, okay? If this is zero, I can multiply. Well, if A is not zero and A is from a field, then A has a multiplicative inverse. So I can multiply both sides of this by the multiplicative inverse. So one over a times a b is one over a times zero, right? Well, one over a times zero will give me zero. Remember that every element times zero gives you zero. Good. Now this I can rewrite, right? This means that zero is equal to that, right? That is just this. This zero is this. This is from that, okay? So zero is equal to this. Well, I can use associativity of multiplication and rewrite this as that, okay? Now multiply an element by its multiplicative inverse, that will give me the, um, the unity, right? In the set. So this will give me one and multiply by B, while one times B is equal to B, okay? So that means that uh, B is equal to what? Is equal to zero. So we said A is not zero, but when we multiply them, we get zero and we have shown that B has to be zero for, for us to get zero. Okay, so this means B is zero. 
Hence, there are no zero devices in F and therefore F is an integral domain. So every field is actually an integral domain because if you take um, every field, you have two elements in it, you multiply them, one of them has to be zero. You cannot have two non-zero elements giving you zero, okay? Good. So that is a proof of, um, of this, all right? So to summarize, um, what we've been doing really from uh, groups up to now is the fact that if you take, um, take a group, which is this bigger set, in this bigger set of groups, you have rings, which, are, which form group, right? They are, every ring is an abelian group under addition. So the set of rings is a subset of groups, okay? Also, um, in groups, you could split, uh, sorry, sorry, under rings, you can split uh, rings into commutative, of course, and non-commutative rings, and you can split it into rings that have unity and rings without unity, right? So you have a set of rings um, that are commutative this in the blue, and there are rings with unity in the, uh, in the reddish pen, right? Well, in the middle, in the intersection of these two, you have uh, an integral domain, okay? And then within every integral domain, you have a field. So we have just proved that every field is an integral domain. Therefore, the set of field is a subset of uh, integral, integral domains, okay? So this is basically gives you a global view and picture of some of these things that we have, we have discussed already. Okay, so um, all the best. Look at the material. If you have any questions, um, if you're facing challenges, just uh, let me know and then we can uh, trash them out. Okay, all the best.